filming another one of these videos, baby. Can't wait to stop filming them. Casey's um here with me today. Hi guys, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another SIBO update because I don't I think I've done one of these in a while. People ask me all the time, SIBO is becoming such a hot topic. My mom was actually just telling me that one of her clients was like 77 and he just got diagnosed with SIBO too. I figured I would do a little update. I've never truly gone into detail with like symptoms and how I realized I had SIBO and why I went to the doctor because I'm still getting a bunch of DMs asking me, how did I know I had it? Long story short, back in the summer, I developed Developed these really weird symptoms and just gas and bloating that was just not normal you know your body and you know when something's not right so I'm going to scale this down as little as I can back in the summer I had lots of gas bloating I kept seeing myself getting larger a lot of you probably know I used to be a little bit heavier and I lost 35 pounds and I kept it off I was doing great everything was great and then one day I was eating even more clean than ever I started tracking macros I was going to the gym twice a day I was overworking myself I was like, why am I gaining all this weight? And I just kept putting weight on and I was like, I don't understand. I was working even harder. And I was like, mom, like, I don't understand. My mom's a personal trainer. So she's also very knowledgeable in this. And she was like, well, like, what are you eating? And I was like, I'm eating so clean. Like I'm tracking my macros. Like at this point I was really, really in an unhealthy mindset of why can't I lose this weight? So I kept gaining weight. I noticed that every time I ate anything, I was burping and I was burping for hours on end. And it was like tiny little burps. It would be uh, 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 like horrible, absolutely horrible. And I was like, this is not normal. And I was like eating so many Tums. It was ridiculous. And I was so bloated to the point I looked nine months pregnant. And then I gained 25 pounds in about a month and a half. As you might know, gaining 25 pounds when you're eating super clean, going to the gym every day after losing a lot of weight was very, very hard on me mentally. And I talked about that and I'm not going to get into that now because I have really tried to overcome that, but I'm still working on it. So SIBO has been a struggle. I went to a GI, we scheduled an endoscopy a couple weeks later. I got my endoscopy. Right before my endoscopy, I watched Nikki Limo's video. She was the one <laughs> that made me realize that like, holy shit, the same thing that happened to her happened to me. After I watched that, I was like, wow, I'm pretty sure I have SIBO. So I went to the endoscopy and I said, can we do the SIBO breath test? He said, I don't do it. So he sent me to a doctor that could do it. It was fucking horrible. It was a four and a half hour test. And then I guess a week or so later, I found out that I was methane dominant. So there's hydrogen dominant and methane dominant. I was methane dominant. So those are the two gases that you're like not supposed to have in your intestines. So I had methane dominant. Of course, I got the one that makes you gain weight and get super fucking bloated. That was the one that I was blessed with. So he put me on Zyfaxin. If anything, I felt worse after the Zyfaxin. I was praying that this would work because I know it didn't work for many people. And I was like, maybe it'll work for me. It didn't work. So I went to a specialist in New York City. I vlogged that whole experience. If you were interested in seeing any of that, I will link it in the down bar below. Saw him. He said, why don't you take a second round of Zyfaxin? I took a second round. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to take more than two rounds in a course of six months. The last time I took it was November. I think I got off of it right before Thanksgiving actually. Yeah. And I felt good for a week and then it like hit me out of nowhere and I felt like shit again. Then I stumbled across this, I guess you could say naturopathic doctor online. His name is Dr. Z. Nikki Limo actually recommended him. So I went over to his website and I purchased the SIBO kit and I'm currently on that right now. I really wanted to kind of get better before I went to LA next month, but I don't think <laughs> that's going to happen. This whole year, I'm really focusing on educating myself on SIBO. I listened to a really, really great podcast the other day. I actually put it on my Instagram. It's in one of my Instagram highlights, so you guys can check that out. If you have SIBO, I highly, highly, highly recommend listening to it. The doctor that she had on was so knowledgeable. It really did sound that like she knew what she was talking about and she was very knowledgeable 
in SIBO. She was a GI, but she also studied nutrition. And a lot of GIs don't understand SIBO because it's so new and there's so little research on it. And there are so few success rates with the Zyfaxin. I ordered a couple books on Amazon that I'm excited to read about gut health and SIBO and all of that. I love when you guys send me recommendations. I absolutely love it because nine out of 10 times I will go buy whatever you know you say works for you. I joined a SIBO support group on Facebook. That has been really cool seeing other people you know conquer SIBO. I'm like wow I wish that was me but go you. It's cool seeing what works for other people. Whenever I tell people what SIBO is and they ask oh like why aren't you eating and I'm like I will get very sick and they're like what and then I explain it to them and they're like I don't get it like well just eat it and I'm like no no you don't understand it's so hard when no one understands kind of what you're going through because it's such a new thing one of my mom's friend is actually a doctor and she said it's there's a lot of people with it now. It was a lot of times misdiagnosed. My doctor that gave me my endoscopy actually didn't want to give me my SIBO test. He was like, you don't, you don't have SIBO. And I was like, sir, I do. I did my research. I was like, this is how I feel. You just kind of have to trust your body. The test that you have to take absolutely sucks. Um, but I was also diagnosed with gastro or something, GERD for short, we'll call it, um, gastritis and IBS and SIBO. So it's a really fun time. I'd like to get into my diet. I had recently posted a what I eat in a day while I'm on the go. And the day later, I actually listened to that podcast and it says that I shouldn't be eating as much fiber as I am. I've also been eating some more carbs. I have been doing like one macro bar a day and I'm starting there and I've been doing really, really good with eating just a little bit of carbs like that. I've been trying to stick to low FODMAP type foods. So it was hard for me to cut out garlic because I really loved having spaghetti squash with like the Rouse pasta sauce at night with like turkey meatballs and that was a great dinner for me but I started getting super nauseous and just weird and I was like I know garlic is so bad to eat if you have things like IBS, SIBO, gastritis. Garlic is not a good thing to eat. So I cut out garlic. So that's been a challenge because I love garlic so much I literally could eat it like from the freaking so I cut garlic out, I cut onions out, and I've really just been sticking to very low FODMAP foods. I've been sticking to lighter meals. I found that I am better when I eat less throughout the day. Like you guys saw in the what I eat in a day video that I just posted. I will usually eat smaller meals throughout the day. Like I just like to pick on things and that's when I find that it's easier for my stomach to do that. I have really cut down on the amount of Tums that I have been eating and I do think that has helped actually. I usually take one Alka-Seltzer a day. Alka-Seltzer has been really helping me. I've been drinking the Smooth Move tea. That's been great. As you know with methane dominant SIBO, the reason you are so bloated and keep weight on is because you can't go to the bathroom. So I've really just been playing with foods, seeing what works, what doesn't and I really want to look into getting my thyroid checked, getting my liver checked because the last doctor told me that my thyroid was fine but in the podcast that I listened to she said just so many amazing things. I really really encourage you to listen to this podcast episode because I just feel enlightened and I feel like I know so much more from this doctor that any other of my doctors have told me. She was just a great plethora of information. I'm actually thinking about getting off of birth control. One of my best friends has ulcer of colitis and IBS. She recently got on birth control and has been having huge issues and apparently birth control is linked to a big part of SIBO. So I'm contemplating it but it's weird because I've never had an issue with my birth control and I've been on the same one since I was like 18 so it's weird. I don't know if you guys are on birth control and you do have SIBO. I would definitely look into some of that research because it is very interesting as well. And antibiotics, of course. Probiotics are like a no-go according to this one doctor, which is interesting. I am taking a probiotic right now. I'm gonna finish all of the supplements in this kit with this doctor gave me. Nikki Limo had success through this if you guys want to purchase it. Talk to your doctor before you purchase it. I will link it down below though because it's great. It was like $200, but Zyfaxin is like 2000 so. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. That's really about where I'm at. If you guys have any questions, feel free to DM me. I love you all so much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.